Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Just a quick little intro to kind of let you know what this, what we're gonna be discussing and doing in this video. So my daughter and son-in-law bought this house about a year, a little over a year ago, right before they got married. And I am ashamed to say, but the first thing I said when I saw the pictures of it was, you have got to do something with that fireplace. It was horrible. I was like, what were they thinking? But I knew it was cosmetic, you know, and it was a nice house and they got it for a really good price and I knew that was something that we could fix. So, they've been in it for a little bit over, well, they got married in December of last year, so a little bit over a year and they had to do some other renovations to the house, so they decided now is a good time to redo the fireplace. So, who do they call? James. And Tyler, my son-in-law, he found an inspiration picture, which is this, and sent the picture to James, and he was like, can he do it? And we were like, of course. <laughs> James can do just about anything with wood. We've seen that already. So with the inspiration picture, we began the reno. So this is what you're gonna be seeing in this video, is gonna show you what we, how we did it, what we um, picked out for it, and kind of the process and the after pictures are amazing. So I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, hit the little subscribe button, follow me on Instagram, all that fun stuff. And let's get on to the video. Okay, so we have a mess out here, but I'm gonna show y'all what we're gonna use for the herringbone pattern on the fireplace for the wood. So we went to Lowe's and we found these pieces and they are the stone washed and they're, they're not too thick. Oops. They're not too thick and they're that rough cut, but they're already the gray color like she wants. So we got these four the herringbone pattern and then for the trim around the opening of the fireplace we picked up this i liked this because it had some detail in it but it wasn't so busy to compete with this and then he's going to be making her mantle and for the crown mold for that he'll use this crown mold for her mantle and then like to finish it out around the top of the fireplace at the ceiling and all that just the edges we just got some simple pulled around and we'll just use that to finish it all off. We'll paint it a nice crisp white and finish that all off. So he got some other pieces of uh, lumber that we needed to do some of the closing up the... James, what do you call that place where the, the fireplace insert goes? The opening where the insert goes. I'm just gonna use that. And he got what he needed to make the mantle. So we're all in right now for everything that we've got to do the fireplace. We're in for about $278. And I think that's gonna be all it's gonna take. No, it wasn't. Maybe he's right, let me see. Oh my bad, 248, he was right, I was wrong. <gasps> So with all of our lumber and boards, trim, uh, the quick seal, all that, we're in for $248.76. So not too bad to have a nice focal wall in your living room if you have a wall similar to this one. So we're about to get started. I just wanted to show you all the materials and this did come from Lowe's. So I guess first thing we're gonna do is figure out where exactly they want the insert, like the height and all that, and then we'll frame up around that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, how far is the hairy mom pattern gonna go? We'll make the hairy mom 60 inches wide. So are we gonna need to paint we'll any of the this? Huh? Are we gonna have to paint any of this? Yeah. Okay. So he's built a little frame to set the insert up on. Mm -hmm. 
So now it's all framed in. And now he's fixing to go make a cut and we're gonna start our herringbone pattern. He's got it all marked out, like where the center is and all that. So that's where we're at so far. It's gonna look amazing. She thinks this is where a man's supposed to be, on his knees. This does not work, no. All right, guys and gals and YouTubers. Now that we've got the framing around the fireplace, what we wanted to do was just give it a good lip to rest back on. Most of your fireplace inserts have a uh, lip around the perimeter. You wanna make sure that that's in there good and tight so that the fireplace doesn't get pulled out or pushed back in. Then we're gonna go ahead and start with our hairy bone pattern. This is completely up to y'all as to how y'all do it. Everything's gonna be run off at 45. Try and keep your angles as true as you possibly can. Check them every chance you can. Because if you get off, that gap's gonna show up. We'll come back, lay in the other side, nail it in, start working down both sides. So how did you get this to start with? You just put your boards up there and got your center mark? Yes. Okay. And then I nailed it. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna get to going. I'm such a good helper, huh, James? Hey y'all. So this is our progress so far. Went ahead and got two coats of navy paint on. James has been steadily working on the herringbone pattern. And this is where we're at. It's looking so good. Progress. So the most important thing, James, is just watch your angles. Yep. That's what you've learned, huh? Yep. You're doing such a good job, babe. It looks so good. Trim pieces for the side. Yep. To finish it off. checking molding to make sure it's plumb. I'm just, I want a good straight edge on the molding so that it sits, looks like. Okay, this is the mantle that he's made. This is upside down, of course, but he is gonna walk you through and tell you how he made this and what he used for this. So, let's see. Okay, tell us what you did, James. All right, different people are gonna be looking for different things out of their lumber. I wanted a clean look. Uh, one of the things, if you go to any of your hardware stores, you can get what's called a select pine, oak, poplar if you wanna stain it. This one they actually requested to be white. I went with select pine so they wouldn't see any knots. Uh, it's not really a country decor, so they want something smooth and crisp. Uh, you look at the uh, select pine, you'll notice there's not any big knots or defects or anything like that, just good straight grain. And you won't have to sand it as much. You'll still need to sand it. All right. What I did was I got a one by eight for the top shelf. I went ahead and doubled up on it so that it give them a little bit of depth on it, not just a regular one by, but uh, actually full inch and a half. This is your uh, prime wood molding. Like I said, since they're going with white, that was the uh, profile they decided to choose. The uh, risers in here, if you look at the back, risers in here are still the uh, one by six select pine. I went ahead and cut those down. Use some pocket screws in here 
to hold all these together. The pocket screws are gonna give it a little bit of strength. If you look at the top side, got pocket screws in here where the load will be bearing on it. If she wants to put pitchers, if she wants to put candles, if she wants to put jars, jugs, whatever, it'll hold up. The bottom one, not as critical for bearing weight, just more or less a trim piece so you can get away with brad nails and a little bit of wood glue. Now, how will they mount this? How, I mean, how are you gonna mount this on the five With a hammer. Are you gonna do like we did with the shelves in the laundry room and have the, like it's, a floating shelf type thing? It'd be best to uh, put a spanner across here and we can actually put, uh, route some grooves in it so that the set screws will go into the wall and just hang on it just like a picture frame. Okay. And so you still have to sand, I see you put some wood filler in here. Yep, I don't wanna see a seam in between the two pieces. That's the only reason the wood filler, you're what never going right to get a perfect edge. Thank you. I just needed that in my QA department. <laughs> Go back inside. <laughs> Went ahead and used a quarter inch router bit to soften the corners just a little bit. Uh, again, that's what they, the picture they had sent. This is the way it turns out. Awesome. So we're going to, you're going to get it all sanded down and then we're going to take it over there. Are we going to paint it before we take it? I got the paint. All right, when we get over there, we'll show you how we mount it on the wall. Okay, so how are we going to hang this gorgeous mantle that you built, James? You did a fabulous job on it, by the way. It looks amazing. She's blowing smoke. We're going to put a cleat on here. That way, it'll make it easier for them to take it down if they want to repaint it and change the color. What you're going to do is you're going to cut a 45-degree angle on your anchor. That 45-degree angle will fit up into it. Okay. Ship, or the mantle itself. Okay. And you're gonna screw it directly into the wall so it'll be definitely be able to hold anything that they would put on it? Yeah, I wouldn't tap dance on it, but yeah, it'll hold it. Okay. Went ahead and pre-marked my center. Okay, well, here's Shadow. There's the center tonight. of the wall. Okay. <laughs> and then you lined it up with the center of your board so you'd know where to... Yes. James, do you need me to hold anything for you? You just need to shine your bottom he's got something he's gonna do because they didn't want a hearth so he's gonna do something there I'm not sure exactly what so for that piece what is that just it's an edge glue piece of pine uh, what we'll do is we'll take off the knot right here so it'll just be a good clean surface ready for paint perfect Oh my goodness, that looks so good. <laughs> 